Does this sound familiar? You've spent all this time figuring out all of your typography, all of your colors, all of your line heights, uh, your buttons, your hovers, um, all of that stuff. And when you start building things out in Webflow, you find that you're making classes over and over and over again. Um, well, I am here to show you a better way to get started. So uh, what I'm going to show today, I'll do a, a tiny demo and then I'll kind of go into more detail, is um, I have this H1 tag. I haven't, if I actually, with this selected, if I try to change something like change that to Volcorn, see how it creates this heading to class? I don't want that, or heading class, I have another one already, so um, I don't want that. What I want is with the heading selected, I want to click in here and find that pink, um, all H1 headings. All the standard HTML tags will have this. Um, and what you can do is style this. This will be the default from then on. And then if you have any deviations or modifications, that's when you should be adding classes. So if I come in here and looking at my design, I have um, Josephine as the header text. And um, the heading one is Josephine Bold, um, 60 pixels um, with a 74 line height. And um, we can go into Webflow and with this selected, choose Josephine. Um, just a little side note, I added this as a Google font. Um, I'll show you how to do that in another video. Um, Josephine Bold with a size of 60 and a line height of 78. Okay, so there's my heading. Um, uh, backing up even farther, if we click on our body, I'm going to open up the navigator. So um, right now, this is how I have this set up. I have a body. I put a container in just so there was a little bit of breathing room on the sides, and then I just chucked a whole bunch of HTML tags in using the add button. So I kind of went in. Um, you may have a sp special list. I would add that. Um, let's see what else. Uh, I will say the button is not actually an HTML tag. So um, I would, yeah, you, you need to like style your links and then go back and make a special button um, style. But I'd probably also do that beforehand before you start laying stuff out. Um, so if I go to the navigator, I click on body, I want to set my default font here so that no matter where I am or what tag I'm using, it'll at least have my standard body font. So I have chosen Nunito Sans for that, and I want my base font to be 20 pixels with 32 pixels of height. So I'm going to set that up in the body. And using this, the cascading part of style sheets, everything will inherit that. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to choose new Nido. Oh, OK. So now I get to show you Google Fonts. So if you look at the font menu at the very top, it says Add Fonts. So if you click on that, it'll take you to a Google Fonts page. You can search for it, new Nido Sans. I know I need regular. I know I need bold, which is 900. Um, let's look at my style. This one, I think I used Josephine. Yeah, so I think it's just bold and regular for now. I can always go back and change it, but um, that is what I'm going to choose. Um, add font. So that will add it to your menu. Um, the trick is it doesn't show up right away. Like if I try to go here and choose it, it is not there. So I have to refresh my browser, reload. And here it is. Um, if I click on the body again, I go up here, I choose body all pages. Now, if I choose Nunito Sans, um, this will set me up and let's see, I said 32 line height. So this gives me a really nice default that I don't have to even worry about. Um, 
similarly, I am not using black. I'm using a really dark green color. So I'm going to grab that from here. Black. What color are you? Oops. There we go. Um, I'm going to grab the hex value. And I'm going to also add that to my body so that by default, that is the font color. Pound. Okay. So as you can see, it, it trickled down to everything. So um, if I don't uh, define a different color for a heading or a block quote, it'll always do green. The only um, difference to that is the text link. Those have um, different colors by default. Um, but now that I have my body tag set up, no matter what I add, it's going to default to green Nunito Sans 20, unless I say differently. Um, and then this is great if you want to use REMS. Um, you could say the header, because it's 60 pixels, you could say it's three REMS instead. Let's just do that for fun. Um, whoa, 60 REMS. Um, three REMS. So three times 20 is 60. You get the idea. Um, cool. So let's, let's finish with the other headers. So same thing here. I want to click in the box before I even start typing anything. Choose that H2 and then make my changes. So, uh, Josephine, what size did I make that? This one is 40 with a 54 line height. When you're designing your, um, your headers, I really recommend seeing what they look like on two lines because it's inevitably going to happen. So 40 and 54, and it is semi-bold. Okay. Semi-bold. Um, 40 and 54. I guess I could say two rums here. Um, just for simplicity sake, I'm going to move on. Okay. So text link has different colors and there's also, um, uh, the hover state. So I actually want my text links to be, um, let's pull up that text, all links tag. Um, interesting. Where is it getting that? Hold on a second. Wow, I think I just found a little bug. So if I click on link and I go to the all links tag, oops, sorry, all links, it shows that the color is that green color, but it's not showing up here. Um, so what I ended up doing, if, um, if I copy this, just so I have the numbers in my thing, and I choose the same color, see if I can do it. Uh, it turns to green. Isn't that funny? So I'm going to make sure it's the actual right color. Um, okay. Yeah, that was funky. So it still defaults to blue, even if you have the, the body, um, like color set to this, whatever different black that you're using. Um, okay, cool. Block quote, um, similar. We're going to check our style. Block quote, I'm using um, Josephine Sands medium italic 2032. Okay, so Josephine Sands. Do, 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 do. I said 30, 24, and 32. Yeah, 24 and 32, I think. Um, anyway, close enough. Let's get, let's get moving here. Um, cool. And then I said it was medium. Oh, Josephine Sands. Okay. It looks like I need to pull in the italics. Um, let's do that. Okay. So here's Josephine. Can, oh, it does say I have italic. What's up with that? Josephine. It's not showing up in my list. Okay, let's try refreshing. Reload. Silly web flow. Let's try it again. Block quote. Josephine. Oh, see how it made a thing. Let's make sure we don't do that. Get rid of that. All block quotes. I forgot to choose the pink. Always choose the pink. Um, Josephine. Huh. Okay. Well, I'll just do semi-bold for now. I'm not sure what's going on there. 
Um, I'll just fake italic. Oh, that looks terrible. Oh, see how that jumped? That's so funny. All right, I will just use the fake italic and make it be, yeah, semi-bold. Cool. Um, what else? Buttons. So buttons are not actually um, buttons like that, that tag that they give you. Add, I'm going to add a button. Um, this is not actually an HTML tag. Like if we look at the code, do, 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 do. Oh my gosh. Why are you taking so long? There it goes. Okay. So, um, it's just a link that has a class of W button. So we're going to have to, you need to style that like a regular thing. Like if you go here, it is actually using all links, which we don't want. Um, so in this case, we are going to make our button be primary of suppose I should have copied these, put them somewhere faster. <laughs> Um, okay, so instead of this, we want this. Um, it doesn't like the pound. There, oh, come on. Pound. There we go. Okay, um, so there's that. We want to have um, rounded corners. What, Max Nun? Where's my spacing? Baseline flex. Um, do, do, do. Uh, okay, I'll go on the, for the hover. So for button hover, we're going to change the color to, what is the color? That one. Cool. So now... If we go, um, it looks like my button's also outside of my container. So I'm going to just drag it over. Bloop. There we go. So now we have this hover. Um, there's the radius. Sorry, I just totally missed it. So I had a radius of eight in the design. Um, cool. So this is our standard button. What if we want to have like a CTA? What I would do is make a copy and... Um, this one, let's give it a subclass um, of um, CTA. I'll do BTN CTA. Button CTA. Okay. So if it is a call to action, I want it to be um, larger font. Do, do, do. We'll make it, I, I'm just, I'm trying to speed up at this point. Um, we'll give it some padding. Um, of, um, if you hold down option, it'll do both sides. Um, okay. So I'll just do that and maybe a little more padding on the top and bottom. Okay. And also I have a different color for my call to action. It's this purple, which is this. Cool. So what, um, what is going to happen is that once you start, oh, I didn't get it. There we go. Um, and maybe I'll just leave it um, yellow. Let's check the hover. So button CTA hover is going to be, we'll just pick a random color. Why not? Um, we'll just make it hot pink or weird, like rosy rose, dusty rose. Cool. So button CTA, what happened? Hover, color, okay, there we go. Okay, there it goes. 
um, that's not very um, accessible because it's really close in color. Um, anyhow, so now once you start, um, like, and now once all these are set up, you can just delete them all. Can I delete them all at once? No. And then when you actually start making stuff, so let's see, container, um, we'll just add, um, we'll just add like a div block. We'll have inside it, we'll have the H1. Um, Wollendorf bike repair. Um, bike by repair, um, it will automatically have all these default um, styles and then it's just a matter of modifying them if you need them different. So saves you a whole lot of headache um, as you're moving along. I hope that was helpful and um, yeah, and I'll see you back for more Webflow fun times. Okay, bye.